um, I titled my presentation Using Gamification to Teach Youth About E-Waste. And that is exactly what we try to do. So there's a little robot there you see on the left uh, who's saying hi to all of you. So welcome. I'm Tobias, and I'm a full-time informatics uh, student at UIO, and I also work part-time as a developer on the side. And our group uh, zero, which we've called ourselves, consists of me, Sinna, uh, and Ramin. And together we're creating a, a game to teach youth about e-waste. And we're doing this in collaboration with the uh, NIS, as you guys heard about earlier, which is the Nordic International Support Foundation. Uh, and it's supposed to be a part of an exhibition, an interactive exhibition, uh, to teach youth about e-waste and to kind of get them engaged about uh, sustainability and start a, kind of start a conversation about it all. And to start with, I wanted to go through our vision, because our vision is that our project aims to use gamification to teach youth about e-waste, and our goal is to inspire, engage uh, social, economic, industrial, and technological stakeholders towards sustainable change in behavior. Uh, and as it will be uh, at an exhibition in Norway, we obviously will have it there, but we do hope that we may broaden the horizon of it. And we've worked a lot with scale to make sure that it could start a broader conversation, that we can have it, for example, uh, in a museum and teaching in schools, and we can scale it up both on the phone and iPad uh, or anywhere else. So how does this relate to transition design? So here you see on the left, the, what you've seen many times today, the transition design framework. Uh, and we've tried to work with this as a tool throughout the process to kind of uh, work with it and, and use that to, um, to inspire us as to, to see um, the way we wanted to do it, very much focusing on uh, our thoughts and our mindset and our posture. So where does this, like where do we come from? We, are, we care very much as a group about sustainability and about um, e-waste and tackling that issue because as we're all informatics students, we use a lot of technologi technology in our everyday lives. So phones and computers and such is, is a part of everyday life. And we, if you have see these UN sustainability uh, development goals, we decided to focus on the five ones which you see highlighted in green. I'm not sure if it's very visible, but those are the ones we decided to, to focus on because we see that e-waste is a, quite a large issue uh, that needs tackling and a, quite a wicked problem with climate change. So to, to start off, we uh, focused on our mindset and posture. But we went together as a group and kind of looked at what do we think? What are our, um, like, what are our, um, our thoughts regarding the topic and what do we want to approach it like? So we approached it very much with an open mindset and we wanted to be critical of the current state and how people use their phones. Because most people now use their phones for about two years and then they throw them away or get a new one. They're not really reused or oftentimes also not recycled in a very sustainable good way. Uh, and that's something that we wanted to change. So we wanted to approach it with openness, but also at the same time being critical to the current status quo. And to do so, we kind of went together and see how are we going to affect this change. So we defined what we'd call kind of our theory of change. And that is um, how we plan to, to go about affecting this change. And we thought that the best way we could do that was to, because it was supposed to be an interactive and a game sort of, we wanted to use gamification to engage youth and um, from 13 to 19 was kind of age range. To, uh, to care about um, their phones lasting for longer and using them for longer instead of just throwing them away. And also informing them about what actually goes into a phone. Because you have a phone, it's very much like a black box. You don't really know what's inside of it. You have a phone, you use it, you throw it away. But there's actually tons of valuable materials in it, like gold and loads of plastics and such like that. And only, only parts of it actually recycle as well. So to do so, we also use a lot of speculative design. We thought about how things might be in a kind of ideal world. Things would be um, better. They would last longer. We not, don't have like planned obsolescence and all of that that we see now, uh, where you could uh, keep your phone for longer than two years if you wanted to and don't have issues with software support and things like that, which we see nowadays. And your phone is often also made out entirely out of glass on the outside. So if you drop it once, you're basically done. The phone has to be changed, has to be repaired. And it's often a costly process and the, 
it doesn't really work so well now. So that's something that we hope to, to kind of affect and how it might be and look at that. So one of the thoughts with that unbreakable phones or unbreakable screens and infinite software support, and that's a very ideal world. And we've thought about that from a speculative design. So that would be very nice to have. And it's in contrast with uh, the how might we, which is the very much more traditional double diamond uh, that we wanted to work with. And we, we let this influence our, our process in the project. Uh, and to do so as well, we did a lot of thinking. And to do so, we went through all these workshops that uh, we talked about earlier. And we used uh, specifically the tarot cards, future will, and backcasting uh, in our project specifically, uh, in addition to the ones that we learned earlier as well, to uh, develop our mindset and posture and develop our thoughts further and how we wanted to, uh, to go about uh, affecting this change and how we wanted to engage youth in a meaningful way. And we also thought that we needed some expert kind of information about it all. Because even though we use phones a lot, we engage with, with kids and all that and play games, we are not kind of the, um, we don't know everything about it. And so we wanted to talk to someone who, know, who knows more. So we talked to a researcher and an expert on the field of e-waste. And we were actually, one of the most important things that we learned is that the most sustainable phone that you can ever have is the one that is in your pocket right now because keeping your phone for only one year longer makes a huge difference in the long run. You might not think so, but keeping it only one or maybe two years longer has a huge effect if everyone does it. Because producing phone, I think I, we read that it, it's about 70 to 78 kilograms of CO2, which is a lot, all things considered. So if you buy a phone every two years, that, that's a lot of uh, CO2 after a while if everyone does that. And we also thought that, we also see that a lot of energy is actually uh, used in the process of just making the phone. So even though you might recycle a lot of the materials, just the process of assembling the phone is actually also harmful as well if you do too much of it. And a lot of the parts are also not recycled. And even though it seems like many companies are trying to change this, we see a lot of greenwashing. And most of the time only the metals and gold and such are actually recycled. So, and then comes our kind of uh, game and it's a very familiar format very much like kind of the flappy bird type of style where you have a phone which you kind of tap up and down and it flies up and down the city and it breaks obviously like your phone does it drops on the ground and breaks and our thought was that you can then decide to repair your phone and of course you then can go on or you can um, can buy a new one and you can go on for a bit longer but eventually you see this little pile there on the bottom grows larger and larger until you basically it's the entire screen. So we wanted to implement it as a gameplay mechanic and in such a way use gamification to, uh, to that effect. And we hope to then inform youth about it while still getting them engaged. And to do so we have our little robot, uh, Friendly Neighborhood Sustainability Robot Zero, which guides you through the process and gives you uh, information along the way uh, and we wanted to focus a lot about teachings. We had some information there about uh, recycling, about what's in the phone, and about what's the current status quo. And this uh, takes us to kind of the last part, which is uh, what we said we wanted to do, and that's to start a broader conversation. Because our goal and how we wanted to, to change is that we wanted to engage the youth, both to talk amongst themselves, but also to engage in a larger and broader conversation. So they might uh, play this game and share it with their friends or with their parents and or maybe take it home and start a broader conversation so it both affects their thinking and keeping their phones for longer and being more sustainable in that way, but also perhaps also influences the companies that then may produce more sustainable phones in the future. So that is our, our end goal, kind of. That's kind of all I had to say. Thank you very much for listening. It's currently just the, the prototype, so it's not very interactive, but I can at least show it to you. Let's see. Let's see. So it starts from there, a little introduction. And then it goes along.
And here you see the kind of gameplay that I was talking about. It's kind of just showing the pictures of it all, but it's supposed to take you through the years, and it basically at the end of the game, it's supposed to give you a tally. So for example, you used uh, four phones towards uh, three years, and kind of showing you what that means. You see here, you could, uh, let's go for the not very sustainable option, because it's fun to see the little graphic at the bottom. We see if you buy a new phone, you do get to go on for a bit longer, and it's also a time thing, but the little pile grows steadily up. And then after a while, your time is up, and you get a little bit of information. You see you use four phones in three years, and that's, that's not very good. <laughs> and then some information about the carbon footprint. And then you, we wanted to also include some information so you can learn more. And that's the kind of end message I wanted to, to give the player.